All right. One of the things that we always do is we put some review problems on there, things from earlier chapters, earlier sections. Before that, review always tend to be more algebra-based. Now it tends to be a little bit more reviewing something we did earlier in the year in geometry. And today's review deals with the idea, and this quiz's review is going to deal with angle pair names. So I'm going to tell you the pair of angles. You tell me the name of the angle pair. This will be on your quiz. Angle 1 and angle 8 will be the name of that angle pair. Pretty. Alternate exterior. Angle 3 and angle uh, 5. They're not alternate. Consecutive interior. How about angle three and angle four? Linear pair. How about angle three and angle six? Alternate interior. Stick with angle 3 and angle 7. Corresponding, I heard it. Um, angle 3 and angle 2. Vertical pair. How about angle 3 and angle 8? None, yeah, no nourishment. Okay, three and eight have no relationship. So again, knowing angle pair relationship names. That's going to be on your worksheet tonight. It's going to be on your quiz on Monday. Be prepared for that. Study those flashcards. Know those angle pair names. Um, I'm going to give you some a uh, couple of variable expressions. Set up an equation that would make L parallel to N. So those are the two. What are we gonna how are we gonna set that up? Is that correct? No. Okay. What's wrong with that picture? And this is a com this is very common. He's doing you a favor by by making a mistake there because somebody else is going to make this kind of mistake in the test. If you don't if you didn't see this today, someone else is making this mistake. Sammy. Why are they supposed to equal what kind of angle pair is that? They're corresponding. Okay? Corresponding angles have to be congruent to make the lines parallel. So minus 2x plus 30, I get 3x equals 60, so x is 20. So 40 plus 30 is 70, and that's also 70. 70 and 70, it makes sense. We have to be really careful of this. We've been, at the last couple of days, we've been adding everything up and setting it equal to 90. Occasionally 180, sometimes 90, not often equal to each other. So again, we can't get caught in a rut of doing everything the same way. Each problem we have to ask ourselves, what kind of angle pair is this? What's the relationship for that angle pair? What does that mean for my equation? Add them up to 80, add them, or 180, add them up to 90, set them equal to each other. I don't know going in. I have to analyze the situation and make a decision. And they're going to be all mixed up. How about if we did
I don't know. Seven X and three X plus eighteen. Now what equation we set up? Ninety? I'm sorry. Is that correct? Why? What kind of angle pair do we have there? Consecutive interior, which means they have to be. What do they have to add up to? 180. Consecutive interiors have to be supplementary. Now we have a little algebra to do. 3x and 7x is 10x plus 18 is 180. So 10x equals 162 divided by 10. That would be 162 tenths or 81 fifths. That's good enough. All right. So that's the kind of problem that we're going to deal with. Setting up and solving basic equations using these geometric situations to set them up, whether it be consecutive interior, linear pair, vertical angles, whatever. Yes? I had a feeling something was wrong there. What did I do wrong? What? 180. I, I wrote it down wrong. I did it right, but I wrote it down wrong. Three minus 18. There we go. Yeah. yeah, I wrote a step wrong. I had the right answer. I just was... No, minus 18. Minus. I wrote, you're right, I wrote divided by, but I did minus, which is what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to do minus, I did minus, but instead of writing a minus, I did a fraction sign, a fraction bar instead, because I was actually thinking too far ahead. See, going too fast. Thinking ahead. Well, I'm demonstrating what not to do sometimes. No. But sometimes you learn more from mistakes that we do from successes, don't we? No? Okay. This is an interesting problem. Which lines, if any, are parallel in this picture? Looks like we got a whole bunch of them, but I'll tell you this, we do not. A and B, how are they parallel? They both have right angles, but A is perpendicular to Y and B is perpendicular to X. Does that help me? Not perpendicular to the same line. Yeah. A and C. Why? Technically, B is a right angle, so that whole line is straight. A. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, no, no. How can you can't you make that assumption. How can you angle it? Is there the right angle? I'll show you. I'll exaggerate it so you can see it. Okay. I still have a right angle there, do I? Does that mean, just because this has a right angle to this line, does it mean it has a right angle to this line? No. What do you mean? I, that didn't change C and A at all. No, I didn't. What your mind was doing is you were jumping to conclusions that things are a certain way based on what you are seeing in that picture, but that's not what the facts tell me. We can only go with what the facts tell us, not with just what, gosh, it looks like it's a right angle. It could just as easily be this situation with the exact same facts. And here it's pretty easy to see, but when I had it all set up so it looks close, it's really easy to make the assumption. Oh, the line went perfectly straight on the board. But we don't have the facts to tell us that. Okay? 
And the bottom line is we have to only go with what we know to be a fact. We can't just start making assumptions based on how the picture looks. That's what gets us into trouble. That's what gets us into trouble. That's the only parallel lines here. X and Y are not parallel, all right? B and A are not parallel. B and C are not parallel. The only one I know is C and A because they're both parallel to line, perpendicular to line Y. Just like here. A lot of people will look at this picture tomorrow or Monday, and if I put this on the quiz, would say 2x equals 3x plus 20 and solve that equation. Because our mind sees it, and we immediately want to jump to conclusions about it because that would be the easiest thing to do, to jump to conclusions rather than actually look at what's going on and weigh the evidence. I certainly hope if you are ever accused of a crime in your lifetime, that the prosecutor bases his case on the evidence and not just on what he sees in front of him, well, how you look, how you dress, basing ju passing judgment on you for something like that. It appears as if she looks like somebody who could go ahead and, you know, kill her entire family, but, you know, Okay, but I'm saying don't just base a judge based on appearance, judge based on facts. We have to judge the situation based on facts, not just appearance. And if you judge based solely on appearance, you will make many mistakes in geometry as well as in life. What facts do we have in this situation? I got a fact right here. XY is perpendicular to XZ. XY is perpendicular to XZ. Ah, what does that mean? Does that mean those angles are congruent? No. Well, not equal, well, add up to 90 degrees. Good. I know, but what happens, but again, we talk about being precise with language, because in the last quiz, we did that, and a lot of people say, you know, they say they equal 90, so they say 2x equals 90, and then the 3x plus 20 equals 90. You might know better than to do that, but not everybody does. So we try to be precise with our language. So 5x plus 20 equals 90. So 5x equals 70. So x is 18. Once I know that, then I know this 18 and 18 is, I'm sorry, 16, isn't it? No, 18. 18, right? 70? Yeah. 10? No. Not 18, 14. I knew that wasn't right. Great. Let me get this again. There we go. There it goes. Magically appeared. There we go. Once I know x is 14, then I know this angle is 2 times 14, or 28 degrees. This is 3 times 14, which would be 52 plus 20, or 42 plus 20 is 62. Are the angles congruent? Not even close. You're right, it doesn't. Sometimes the pictures aren't drawn exactly accurately to scale, are they? That's why we don't judge based on the appearance of the picture. We judge based on the facts. That's why. We learn to judge based on facts in geometry. That's what we do. All right, let's hand out the worksheet. I'll give you some time to work on the review sheet. There are a couple changes or additions. We Actually, a couple, not changes, but additions we need to make to the worksheet. A couple things that accidentally got let, left off. So uh, once I hand these out, then we will quickly add those things in so that you can actually complete some of the problems.
All right. I want you to just very quickly turn to uh, the front page, number 24 and 25. For number 24 and 25, you have drawings with other information, that, but one piece of information that's missing is this box in the corner. You need that little right angle box in the corner for both of them. You can put it both in the same corner, but you need that fact in order to solve those problems. All right, for 24 and 25, you need both. You need that symbol. So draw that in. Otherwise, you don't know what to do, or you'll think you know what to do, but you won't. Uh, the other one is on the back side of the graph, 17 and 18. We forgot to put lines in there. Oops. But uh, we'll put the same line in both of them, and I will draw it out here exactly where I want it, so you can see it. All right. For both problems, really? It's being slow. Strange. Oh well. I'm over it. Okay, for both problems, let's have the line go through. I thought I'd do one of these out. Easier if I could just draw it. Seems we kind of freezing up a little bit. Um, there we go. No, okay. Try one more time. No, Let's see if I can do it. No, it just doesn't want to do that today. Okay, line's going to go through. Uh, negative 3, 1, so the point negative 3, 1, and 1, negative 2. So both lines should go through negative 3, 1, and 1, negative 2. So both times you get the same line drawn on there originally, and then you should be able to work from there. Both lines will look, they'll be up and to the left. So negative 3, 1, 1, negative 2. So negative 3, 1, and 1, negative 2. Your line should look like this for 24 and 25. That's the line you're being parallel to or perpendicular to. Both, both these are the same. Now, they're going to tell you to do a parallel line and a perpendicular line. You're going to have to draw in there. But you wouldn't even know what to be parallel or perpendicular to if you didn't have that line drawn in. So negative 3, 1. And 1, negative 2. Those are the two points you're looking at. Okay.